Welcome to a new Carter Report series, The Game Changers. These rare individuals appear once in a lifetime, like a blazing meteor across the night sky. They change the course of history. They show us the way forward. Welcome to The Game Changers. I want to give you today a tremendous welcome to this program because you are going to enjoy it and you're going to be better after it. Starting in 1927, Time Magazine. You all read Time Magazine? Time Magazine selected a man or a woman of the year. In 1999, the category was enlarged to person of the year. Someone who had made a worldwide impact for good or for bad. In more recent times, it's basically for the person whom they think maybe has made an impact for good. Hitler in 1938, can you believe this? Man of the year, he made an impact. Stalin in 1939 and a repeat in 1942. The man of blood killed about 60 million people. Wallace Simpson in 1936. Who's heard of Wallace Simpson? You haven't heard of Wallace Simpson? I'm disgusted. Wallace Simpson was the lady who ran off with the King of England. And he was for, and she was an American. A divorcee. (laughs) And so he was forced to abdicate, but she made it woman of the year. Queen Elizabeth. You all know the Queen of England, the great Queen, 1952, woman of the year. Churchill, the man of the half century, the man who saved uh, the world, hopefully for democracy. Gorbachev, 1989, man of the decade. You know of Gorbachev, don't you? One of my great heroes. Uh, The man who broke down the walls of separation between the Soviet Union and us. He brought in, if my memory is working, Glasnost and Perestroika. Yeah, great man. Man of the decade, Martin Luther King. Man of the Year in 1963, who brought in civil rights, especially for our black brothers and sisters. And in 2016, Donald Trump, Man of the Year. All the presidents have become Men of the Year, except three. Einstein in 1999, was the person of the century because really he gave us the hydrogen bomb. 1999 was the year has changed to person of the year. And in 19, 2015, it was Angela Merkel. Do you know who she is? The Chancellor of Germany and really a significant person. All of these people had one thing in common. Uh, They're all great game changers. People who've made a significant contribution in some way or the other to the human race. Now, today we are starting a new dynamic and marvellous series, The Game Changers. The most important people in history, more important than times people, most important people in history, in the history of the world. And all of these people, without an exception, have been game changers who changed the world for the better. People show us how to die and possibly, more importantly, how to live. Who reveal the spiritual secrets of success over and beyond. We can learn so much from The game changes, God's game changes. I promise you 
The game changers will change you and will bless you. And the first game changer we're starting with today is one of the greatest people who've ever walked upon planet Earth. One of the greatest of all human beings, almost without a peer. His name is Moses. The prince of Egypt, the man who could have been king. And I want to turn in the Bible to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 23, my friends. I'm going to turn over here to the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. And this book, of course, was written to the Hebrews or the Jewish people. Hebrews 11 and verse 23. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Egypt. Have you been to Egypt? Mm. Some of you have been to Egypt. I've been to Egypt many, many, many times. Did you know this? Egypt was the world's superpower. Egypt ruled the whole of the world, or the then known world, for more than 2,000 years. Has a history that goes back thousands and thousands of years. And Moses was the prince of Egypt who could have been the king. The pyramids were a 1,000 years old when Moses was born. And so he was born into a mature and advanced civilization. Amazing. He was born three and a half thousand years ago at the height of Egypt's power. I've had the privilege of going into the Cairo Museum on many occasions, walking around the streets of Egypt's great cities with my friend uh, Randy Yonker, one of the world's greatest biblical archaeologists from Andrews University. And when you go to this place, you have a sense that you are walking in the footsteps of the greatest people or some of the greatest people. When Moses was born at the height of Egypt's power, he was born at the time of, now listen to this because it's almost too hard to believe, He was born at the time of the Moses kings. Did you know this? Most of the kings during this time have got Moses, which is an Egyptian word, in their name. Tutmos, uh, Amoses, uh, Ramoses, whom we call Ramesses, and so forth. So he was born at the time of the Moses kings. The children of Israel had been living in Egypt for hundreds of years. You know the story of how Israel or Jacob went down into the land of Egypt and the people multiplied tremendously and they became a security threat to the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh sent out a decree that they were to become slaves. There is evidence of Semitic slavery in the land of Egypt. I've seen it with my eyes. And finally, in desperation, Pharaoh made this decree, kill not the girls but kill the boys. And there was this beautiful little baby boy who was born and his mother in desperation took him down to the mighty Nile River and she placed him in this little basket and she let him go upon the bosom of the Nile River. And the Bible tells the story that the princess came down to bathe. And she saw this basket and she opened the basket and her heart was touched by the crying of a baby. Now, I'm somewhat convinced that we know who this princess was. I think it was the woman who created this great, great, marvelous temple that is called Deir el-Bahri, 
which is on the west bank of the River Nile at Luxor. Dr. Randy Yonker, I believe, is a great scholar, and I think he would indicate from the Bible that the princess was Princess Hatshepsut, who became the pharaoh. But the interesting thing is this. She goes down, she sees the baby, and then there's a little girl there. <laughs> and the little, girl say, the little girl's name is Miriam. I want you to notice the text, however, in the Bible. Exodus chapter 2 and verses 1 down to 3. Exodus chapter 2 and verses down 1 down to 3 in the Old Testament. And a man of the house of Levi went and took his wife, a daughter of Levi, so the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. But here is the little girl, the big sister of Moses. And when, <laughs> when the baby is discovered and the baby cries, uh, the little girl says, um, can I help you? Uh, can I fetch a Hebrew woman? And she runs off and she gets the mother of Moses. And Moses immediately is no longer in fear of his life. And what is more, the mother who'd been struggling to put the money together to feed her family immediately is on the payroll of Pharaoh. And people tell me they don't believe in the providence of God. It was in the providence of God that Hatshepsut went down there. It was in the providence of God that the baby cried. It was in the providence of God that Miriam was there and that the mother was called. Now, what I want you to know is this. As we talk about these great people who've changed the course of history, God has a plan and a destiny for every person. God had a plan and a destiny for the little baby Moses. And God has a plan and a destiny for you. Every person watching the telecast today, you are important in the sight of God and God has got a plan and a purpose and a destiny for you. He's watching over you. You are never, never alone. Now, I want you to notice chapter 2, verses 6 and onwards. Exodus 2, 6 and onwards. When she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Um, the word Moses is an interesting word. It's an ancient Egyptian word and it's a Hebrew word. And in the Egyptian language, it means born of. And so when she called him Moses, she could very well have been using the Egyptian word and she could well have been using the Hebrew word, which she probably understood. The Hebrew word means drawn out. And so he was drawn out of the river, but he was also born of the river. And so he was, in her thinking, a very, very special little baby that had the favour of the gods. God provides. His mother had him for a few years, most likely 12 years. During this time, she did everything she could to teach this little boy, the great truths about the great God and that her people had been called by God and that they were now slaves and that God had a purpose for this little boy. I want every person watching the telecast to know today 
that there is a divine providence and God has got a purpose for every life. And the purpose of God for you is that you will fulfill this purpose and find true greatness. This is the purpose of God. His education, Acts chapter 7, verse 21 and 22. Would you look at it, please? But when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him away and brought him up as her own son, the palace of Pharaoh. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deed. Um, Some people who don't know a great deal about ancient history think that these ancient people were barbarians. The ancient Egyptians were some of the most amazing people on the face of the earth. Moses got, through Pharaoh, the best education that the world could provide. These were the people who did astounding engineering marvels. I've seen them many, many times. A marvelous system of writing. They studied the stars. Uh, Moses went to the Oxford or the Cambridge or the Harvard of his day. All expenses paid. (laughs) God wanted this young boy to get the best that the world could give him. God provided for his education. Listen. God will provide for your needs. If you are in the right relationship with God, God, God will even provide for your education because you're the son of the king. Then the great crisis came when he was about 40 years of age. He was then a a mighty prince of Egypt, one of the greatest. Uh, He could have become the pharaoh. And one day he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. And Moses was a hot-headed man And Moses, the Bible says, look this way and that way. And then he took the law and God's purpose into his own hands and he killed the Egyptian. That's found in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, so he looked this way and that way. And when he saw no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Therefore, the most astounding truth is this that Moses, who gave us the first five books of the Bible, the most important words ever said by human lips, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, came from Moses. He wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And Moses was a murderer. Uh, Sometimes we like to think, well, you know, he... Didn't know what he was doing. He looked this way and he looked that way. It was premeditated murder. But it shows you the amazing power of the grace of God. I want you to know this. God's grace is greater than all of our sins. I want you to know this. You know know the amazing old English hymn, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You know who wrote it, don't you? John Newton, a Church of England minister. He was the captain of a slave ship. Do you know what they used to do to some of those black slaves? They used to throw them overboard out in the ocean. They'd throw them overboard. Men, women and children. You know why? They could claim the insurance. Amazing grace. And God redeemed him. Therefore, I would say this to every person who was discouraged, never despair, never give up hope. Never, never, never. Because the grace of God is greater than all of our sins. You see? Now the story goes on and says this. Moses fled to Midian in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, I'm going to kill you. So he fled, had to leave Egypt. He fled to Midian. 
And uh, there he met seven women at the well, the daughters of Jethro, the priest of Midian, a man of God. Later on, he married Zipporah. God provided him with a wife. The great God of the Bible is the God who provides people with all of their needs, including their spouses. God has got a partner for you. He has. Then he became a shepherd in the wilderness, wait for this, for 40 years. I wish every one of you could come with me to Egypt and see the glory of that ancient land. And we see it not as it was, but now as it is broken down and decayed after thousands of years. But he left the glory of Pharaoh's palace and was driven into the wilderness. And he is there for 40 years. Can you believe this? A shepherd in the wilderness looking after sheep for 40 years in the university of God Almighty. I want you to know this, folks. Before you can stand on the mountain, you've got to go down to the valley. Before you can go to the land of milk and honey, you've got to live in the desert. Before you can live with the saints, you've got to live with the sheep. (laughs) I know of a minister in Australia and his wife who've gone through a terrible time, treated so unjustly, had a great job, dismissed from his job for no, no lawful reason, just done in. But I want him to know if he's watching this telecast, your best days are still to come. I want you to know this. You may be down in the valley. You may be in the wilderness. I can think of a lady who's had a terrible sickness for years and she said, why doesn't God do something for me? I feel depressed. I feel sick. I want to tell you, I want you to know this. You may be down in the wilderness, but one day you're going to stand on top of the mountain and one day you're going to go to the promised land. You see, the best, the best is still to come. Away from the glory of Egypt. Moses saw the glory of God. Uh, He graduated from the University of Hard Knox, whose colours are black and blue. But ahead was the mountain and the land of milk and honey. God has a glorious destiny for you when you are a child of God. God has not forgotten you. You have a glorious future. You can divide Moses' life up into three parts. 40 years learning and 40 years unlearning and the last 40 years doing the will of God. He had to unlearn a lot of things. And then after 40 years, he led the flock to the back of the mountain. And as he led the flock to the back of the mountain, he saw the most amazing spectacle that an eye could ever, ever, ever see. He saw a bush that was on fire and the bush was not consumed. And when he got over near the bush, he heard a voice that said, Moses. Moses, who are you? The person said, I am Yahweh Elohim. I am the almighty God. Moses was afraid to look upon God. And Moses heard the voice of God saying, Moses, you've been in the wilderness in my university for 40 years. You're now an old man of 80, but now the time for which you were born has come. I've heard the cry of your people and my people in the land of Egypt. Now, therefore, go to Pharaoh. 
And when you go to Pharaoh, take this rod, your rod, and go and stand before Pharaoh, the greatest and the most powerful person in the world. Go stand before the great Pharaoh, whom I think was Tutmosis the third, and say to him, uh, and this is the God speaking out of the fire, and he says, let my people go. Up to that time, that was the greatest meeting in the history of the world a man who was burnt with the sun, a man who'd been out in the desert for 40 years and he stands before Pharaoh and says, let my people go. Now, please stay with us. We'll be back in just a few moments. time. It takes only a minute to have eternal life. How can you get saved in a minute? It's simple. First, believe that Jesus was the Son of God. Second, accept his free gift of eternal life, and then you're saved. It's not hard. It doesn't take any time. You can be saved in a minute right now. Pray with me. Lord God, I realize that I am a sinner. My sin has separated me from you. I accept that your Son, Jesus Christ, died for me. I ask Jesus into my heart. If you prayed this prayer, you are saved. The next thing to do is tell someone, fellowship with other followers of Jesus, get baptized, read your Bible and pray. Choices, we make them every day, all day. The most important choice you will make in your life is whether to choose eternal life or let it pass you by. If you'd like more information about your new life, call the number and visit our website. In the series, This I Believe, Pastor Carter reveals the heart and soul of the Carter Report. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Ten Commandments. I believe in the true gospel. I believe in the last days. I believe in the America that believes in God. I believe in heaven. I believe in evangelism. This, I believe. The seven DVD series, This I Believe, can be yours with a gift of $75 US or $105 Australian. Please write to us at the address on the screen or visit our website at carterreport.org. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.